What's up everybody? My name is Lenny Kaiser from Sequence One Music School in Oakland, California. And today I'm super excited to show you Push 2 and the new features in Live 9.5. So what I have here is the start of a beat. And already you can see that the display on the Push 2 here has can completely been overhauled. There's a lot more resolution, a lot more detail, and there's access to full colors now. Let's go ahead and start by adding some audio. So I'm gonna hit add track, and we're gonna scroll through on the browser here. I'm gonna go to user files, and a custom folder that I made called stems. Now you're gonna notice that when we start to browse over these audio files, that we actually get an audio preview of them as we go. Take it down and turn it up. So we can turn the preview for the browser on and off Take here. Take it down. And now we can load that audio file into our session. So you could see now that we have loaded that audio file into the new Simpler. And a really important thing about the new Simpler is that samples can now be warped inside of the Simplers. So there's three main modes now in the Simpler classic, one-shot, and slicing modes. So in classic, when we trigger a sample, it's going to play only as long as we hold it down. Take it down and turn it up. So you see when I let go, it stops. One other cool thing that differentiates classic mode is that we can actually play multiple samples in sync together at different pitches. Take it down and turn it up. So, if we go up to the rotary encoder here and we switch to one shot, the difference now is going to be that samples are monophonic, so we won't be able to play multiple samples at once. And when we trigger a sound, it's going to play the sample entirely. Take it down and turn it up. Wait, yo, shake it. Come on. And we have a lot of the same controls that were in the original Simpler. We can adjust the endpoint. We can adjust the start position. We can add fade ins. And we can, of course, transpose the sample. So one shot mode is going to be really good for drum samples, whereas the classic mode, that's going to be a little bit better for any sort of sound that has harmonic or melodic content to it. So the next, and this is by far, in my opinion, the coolest, is the slicing mode. So you notice there that when I switched from one shot to slicing, it automatically sliced up our sample non-destructively, so it did not create any new audio files, and it did not split them into their own individual drum racks like the slice to MIDI function does. In this case, we now have slice markers per every transient, and we can go ahead and change the sensitivity of the transients with the sensitivity control here. So we take that down, and you see that we get less samples, and we could turn it up. So notice now, if I take the sensitivity down, if I wanted to remove any slices that I didn't want, we can remove that. Take it down and so we got that little bit there that we want to erase. We just hold delete, and that removed the slice marker there. And you notice that on the pad grid, everything kind of went downwards. We can also add a slice from the push automatically. And to do this, we need to turn on pad slicing here. And then when we play the sample, we hit a blank pad, and it's going to add a new slice marker there. No, no, wait, no, wait. So we want to put it on wait there. So I'm going to trigger the sample and then hit a blank pad. No, wait. And you can see that it's added that slice marker there. Come on, get, shake, yo, wait. So now I go back and you'll notice that again it rearranged the pads. Wait, wait, wait. It's not quite on. This is where we use the nudge function 
to nudge that sample. So we can clean up Yo. all of our samples here by nudging them. Shake, 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 shake. And now let's go ahead and record a performance now that we've created our, our slices for this. So now that we've recorded that, we can use the quantize function to correct the timing a little bit. And now you can see that it's going to be playing those samples within the simpler device. So from here, a couple other things about the slicing mode. We also have monophonic playback, which um, is only going to allow us to trigger one sample at a time. We have poly, so we could play two samples or more at once. Um, and then we have through, which is basically going to trigger from that one slice and then play through the rest. Yo, shake it. Come on. So now I'm going to show you how to use the analog modeled filters that have been added to the auto filter to process your bass in a unique way. So to do this, the first thing I want to do is select on our bass and go to scale mode, set it to F minor. We can change it with the rotary encoders here and with the buttons on top and below. So let's go ahead and record our bass line. So now let's add our auto filter by hitting add device and scroll down to audio effects, auto filter, and load. You'll notice now that the, there are five different circuit types, clean, OSR, MS2, SMP, and PRD. And these are all modeled off of different pieces of gear. So they're each gonna have their own different sound and style and warmth and kind of vintage character that they give it. So the th control that we're gonna be looking to add on these is the drive. So I'm gonna solo up the bass by hitting solo and add drive and flip through some of the filters so you can hear it. Now I'm going to show you a trick for writing chords with the push. And this trick is pretty simple. Just find the shapes of the chords with one hand first, and then to create a more complex extended chord, use your second hand after to find some other notes. Sounds pretty simple, but it's helpful to me. So here's the first chord progression that I found. And before I do that, I'm going to hit accent, which is going to allow all of the notes to be played at the same velocity. So here's what I found first. So once I found that, I then used my left hand to just play between different notes to create more extended chords. So now I want to show you a little bit into this session for the song that we've been working with. And I'm going to show you how on the push we can use the sampling workflow again to create a build up with a drum break. So here's our, here's our build up right now. So let's go ahead and add a drum break to that. So I'm going to go to add track. Scroll down to user files, stems, and we're gonna add an amen break here. And I'm gonna load that in. And we're gonna set it to slicing. And we're gonna turn the sensitivity down. Right, so I like that slice right there. So I'm going to turn repeat on. So
So now let's go ahead and record that. And there we have it. Could use a little bit of a cleanup. So we could go back in and just get rid of that last note. And now we're good to go. So now we have a nice added drum break for our buildup um, using the push. So there you have it. If you want to learn more about producing music with push and Ableton, check out sequence1.org.